Hey, Miami sports fans, stop by Canesware today at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, Florida, and check out their awesome merchandise selection of your favorite South Florida sports teams. From the Miami Dolphins, Hurricanes, Heat, Marlins, Florida Panthers, and Inter-Miami, they've got it all. Celebrate your favorite team and show off your fandom with their beautiful team starter jackets, killer-looking helmets, team jerseys, cool shirts, and more. And if you're out of town or out of state, no worries. Go to canesware.com and find everything they have on their site. Select what you want, and they will ship your gear to you. Anything over $99 is shipped for free. Don't wait. Stop at Canesware today. Forgot how long that on the clock start. <laughs> it's like it's like sixty. It's sixty minutes. You know, I always think of it like that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Clock. I'm your host, Bobby Fitztalk, joined by Coach Vogel, and again by Josh Wingate, who is hopefully at a hundred percent. I'm not at a hundred percent, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, not. Shot and I'm I'm ready to go. Dude, I I've been begging for a quarter zone shot. They put me on antibiotics today. And they got me on some special cough medicine so I could sleep at night. It's been a tough go, but it's all good. We are here. We missed you guys. Uh, missed talk of draft. There's so much to talk about. The smoke is becoming a little clear, I think, or maybe getting a little thicker uh, in regards of what's going to go down, whether it's the Chicago Bears, the Vikings, most importantly, at least for us, the Dolphins, uh, and, of course, Wingate, the Cowboys. Uh, but – before we get into all of that, uh, first, Coach Vogel, how are you, sir? Great. I love this podcast. It's a favorite one to do, man. I, I look forward. You know, we say I say the same thing every every week. It's not like a broken record. Uh, coming off spring break, um, and then had this week, last week, uh, a week in the second week. Um, I got a, a lot of film watched, um, almost done with – with with those just got a few more linemen i and i screwed up the wide receiver report now it's not giving me an overall grade whatever I did. oh you so, did it. you messaged me about it's, that, it's right? fine i'll i'll, yeah, I'll get it somewhere I'm, I'm gonna have everything graded by the time the draft you talk about the spreadsheet through. the spreadsheet the excel yeah, sheet the top one the top 100 oh okay 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 yeah. all right I, I was having it too where it's kind of playing with me not that it was the excel sheet that the, for the grading and i ended up if you click on the uh, where it's supposed to give you the overall grade, it will give you the formula. Yeah. So I was able to figure that out and get it work. So now oh, I'm see, kind of smart. I'm frozen. I'm not that smart. I'm just I'm, oh, hey, when you start yeah. throwing numbers and letters together. Oh, I'm horrible. I, I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to find <laughs> it. And I was like, okay, if I put this here, now it's working. Yeah. You know, Wingate yeah. just sends you. He yeah. doesn't, you know, send instructions. He just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Josh, man, it's been a while, brother. It's good to see you on yeah, here, man. How, first off, I, uh, you say you're not 100%, but you're feeling good enough to be here. How's everything yes. else been? It's been great. I uh, just got back from Disney World. I found out a five-year-old, five days at Disney is, um, for lack of better terms, a shit show. Um, <laughs> but she had, like, coming back and her looking back at the trip has been amazing because she's just, all she's doing is playing like she's been at Disney and still at Disney, so. It's good. Um, we had a great time. My wife was trying to plan the trip again, and I'm like, we need to hold off for a little bit. Um, but yeah, we can't yeah, do great. That's I, I, awesome. I'm trying to push her to like, let's do a cruise next vacation. Let's not go to Disney Ooh. World. I want to relax. It, it, it that's the thing. Like when you go on a quote unquote a vacation with the kids, it's not really a vacation, you know, because you're still kind of parenting at that. It gives you yeah. little, it's more about the kids than anything. Well, when we took the kids to Disney World, which was you know it was Audrey and Ellie stayed at the hotel with my mother. Audrey, of course, had a fever. Uh, she she all of a sudden she couldn't do it. She was you know, and I was so excited about bringing her, you know, and um. So that became a thing. My wife had to take her back to the hotel. Then it was just me and my son, which was which was cool because a father son at Disney yeah, World yeah. experience. But of course, he wanted to be with his sister, and so it, it's always it's always a work, you know. I actually, when I went down for the cancer challenge with my wife, that was more of a vacation 
than coming down with the family to Disney yeah. World. So it's Bobby, all good. What is that? When's the cancer thing every year? Do you know what month uh, that is? Every, is it the same month every year? Yeah. Uh, yeah. February. It was in February. February. Yeah, man. It was great. Um, I'm definitely going back. So if you want to make plans on that, I'll get you connected with the team and we could do it, man. It was great, brother. Um, but so much to talk about. Obviously, uh, Dolphins, Bears, you know, we, we all kind of figure what the Bears are going to do at one. That's not a secret. I think I'd be shocked if it's anybody but Caleb Williams. Um, however, a sh the, the it looks like they might pull off a Houston or they might think about pulling off a Houston Texans type of move. There's been a there's a rumor floating around that the Bears are possibly looking to trade up back into at least the top five. You think about Arizona, possibly the Chargers, to to secure Marvin Harrison Jr. So, Coach, I am going to start with you here. Uh, you know, they they traded for Keenan Allen. They got DJ Moore last season. They're going to have Caleb Williams. Is it smart for them to trade possibly three first-round picks, maybe their second-round pick, to come up to grab Marvin Harrison Jr.? Is he worth that, or would you think it's probably better to sit tight, let the draft follow you, and get either Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors, or maybe Brian Thomas? Um, I mean, if he's, if he's your number one wide receiver and you've got the draft capital to do it, you might as well go all in now. Get, get your stud quarterback, get, your, get another stud wide receiver, and you're set at those positions for a long time. You know, I I, I think you'd be, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. You, you might not have this this chance or this type of uh, draft capital to do that again. Um, although, if you're giving up three first rounds just to get that wide receiver, I you know, my number one was uh, the kid from LSU was Neighbors. Yeah. So I, I think if you stand pat or maybe not go all that all that way to get him, um, I mean, you know, those those three though and Adunze, I think we're um those those three are all from you all the draft Knicks and you know, you hear everybody talking that they're very uh similarly graded across the board. People have them similar on their on their boards, but um I mean if if Poles wants it, and he he thinks he can pull it off, and that's their guy. You might as well pull a Texans and go for it. Yeah, I was just want to first sit. Their next go highest. Ahead, go. I, I, what I was meant to say is that um, if that's their next highest graded guy, you know, if it's quarterback and D line, then you go for D line. But if it is quarterback wide receiver, you, then pull the trigger, man. Go well, look for what it, it did for Houston, brother. Extent. Hey, I get you. And and you know what? Uh, I think that's fair. Uh, before I jump to Josh very quick, let me welcome in Scotty and Daniel in the house. Scotty! Everyone else watching via uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, uh, Twitch. Everyone, appreciate you all watching and tuning in. Uh, Daniel, <clears throat> evening, guys. Excellent tweet by CK Parrot today. Raises serious questions that were drafted D-tackle at 21. Every Dolphin should read this. Uh, Daniel, if you don't mind, if you could pop that tweet in here or, or share exactly what he said. Um, Scotty, in regards of Caleb Williams and a Marvin Harrison Jr. combo, go for it. That's definitely an all-in move. Uh, I feel D tackle has already been in the picture at 21, has always been in the picture. Almost a no-brainer if Johnny Newton out of Illinois is there. We're going to talk on that. But before we move on to that, uh, Josh, your thoughts on a possible trade-up for Marvin Harrison Jr. Is it a smart move, or is he worth three first-round picks? Oh, no. Uh... I don't think any wide receiver is worth three first round picks unless you're going for the the big three quarterback, left tackle, uh, pass rusher. I'm I'm not giving that up. But what I I would say is I agree with uh, Coach um, when he mentioned it. I wasn't on the show, but when he mentioned that he has neighbors above Harrison, like I'm all in on that. If you want to tell me, just like I would say. If you want to tell me that Jaden Daniels is above um, Caleb Williams, I, I'm not going to disagree with you on that. Um, if you want to tell me that Malik Neighbors is wide receiver one, I'm not going to disagree with that. And with that being said, I don't think the separation of Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze is that great. So for you to go and give up the value there, 
for a player that's probably going to fall to you because we're looking at a bunch of quarterbacks going at the top. We're looking at some offensive tackles. Um, I guarantee you one of these corners or pass rushers are going to sneak up into the top 10 somehow, some way. Um, if you're looking at that, you're going to have a receiver fall to you. And I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to complain with either one of these three. So it's hard to give up that value and that draft capital when you're seeing what you're seeing um, fall to you at the original pick that you're at. Uh, Scotty, I have what Daniel's talking about. I found it. We'll touch on that uh, in a little bit um, and talk about what uh, Chris Kaufman uh, at CK Parrot um, X, what he had to say about the D tackle situation. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> We did talk about edge rushers last episode. I see you put it on there. Uh, but, Josh, um, you weren't on. Uh, do you want to do a brief overview of your top five edge rushers? I have not been able to get into them. I've been so busy. Um, but I, I will say um, a guy that has not been talked about the way that I would anticipate him is Chop Robinson. I think he's uh, – we, we've gone through this vision of you have to be this complete guy. But when you can rush the passer the way that Chop Robinson can do and you can affect um, the game, it's very similar to what we're seeing in Dallas. Um, so I think Chop Robinson is going to be probably more valued than what uh, Twitter uh, draft is, is value him at because this guy rushes the passer like no other. And I just – I think the value there – so he's probably – um, I haven't been able to watch Latu yet, and I, I know he's going to be very good. Um, I would say Chop Robinson might be number two for me, um, but I want to I want to watch him and evaluate them. I'm going to go hard here um, in the next couple weeks, get my um, players done, and we're going to have this top 100 solidified here soon. So I'm excited for that. I, I'm very excited. And let me just say, me and Coach talked about this last episode with Chop Robinson. I mean, when you watch the film, and in, <clears throat> excuse me, when you watch the film, you see it all there. You know, he has all the traits you want in an edge rusher. All the, you know, all the talent is there. The only thing that's missing is the production. You see all the skills, and then you look at the production, it just doesn't match. However, I think you're right. I would not be against drafting him at all actually i was doing a, a mock and I, I have to fix it up now especially with the recent reports coming out um and chop robinson was who i had going to miami does it stay the same we'll see i'm reevaluating everything now darius robinson is the edge that i could see making a late move up the board i've seen his name starting to pop up a lot now uh darius robinson and i'm gonna go back to him and take a look at him again we're just trying to get through the remaining guys we haven't gotten to yet before we can kind of round about a little bit to some of the key guys we want to take a look at again. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Coach, what do you, yeah, you, you uh, Chop Robinson, what Wingate is saying, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 I had him a high second. Um, and I think, you know, I, there's a very good sh chance that he'll go in the end of the first, in my opinion. Um, he does, you know, he has all the, I mean, he, you know, you, he does have a little, um, what, what's the fellow from, uh, from Penn State that's with the Cowboys? I just blanked out. No, he, he shows Micah Parsons. That. Yeah. He shows some Micah Parsons there a little bit. Um, you know, so if he could, if somebody drafts him, then you can, uh, coach him up. I think he's got a, a lot of potential. I mean, there's, you know, again, in my opinion, 90% of the, the draft is, you know, who's getting drafted, who's drafting you, and are the coaches able to, um, you know, get you to play up? You know, how many quarterbacks end up getting taken, one or two overall, and then, you know, they end up with the Cleveland Browns and the Browns back in the day that didn't have anybody that could develop a quarterback, and you end up going through 25, 30 quarterbacks in four years. Yeah. So. I, I just – my – my belief is there's a, a bunch of dogs in this draft and we, we put a yeah. high belief in, well, you have to take this guy in the second round. You can't take him right. in the first round. Right. But if you tell me that you want to take, um, can't think of his name right now. Bobby, who's your defensive lineman guy. Brandon Fisk. 
Brandon Fisk, if you've told yeah. me you want to take him in the top 20, I know that guy is going to pan out. I yeah. know for a fact he's going to be a dog in, the, yeah. in this league. And when we look back at the draft, there's a lot of people probably saying end of the first, second round pick. But when we look back at this draft, and if you do get him in the second round, that's going to be such great value. But yeah. then if you're like, I would have taken him 15th overall, no one's going to argue with you three years down the line yeah. when you have Fisk just <laughs> dominating on your defensive line. I, I just take take the great players. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter what value they're. To at. me, it's that Detroit Lions mentality. That, you know, they don't care where if they if you have them listed. If Josh Wingate has them listed the third round, if I need him in the first round, if that's the player that's number one on my board, and I'm taking him, it doesn't matter. Hundred percent. What what the pundits say, like I I am very you know. Oh, you can't take a center at 18 because he's the the value isn't there. If I need a center, I'm going to take a center. You know, that's just that's the way I look at it. Can we answer this uh, Scotty question? Yeah. Right here. Oh, you. Uh, we hit it. Oh, sorry. Time. Yeah, you, uh, no, I'm done touching. Go ahead. Done. <laughs> um, I no. would not be against if we saw draft day, um, because I think Dak Prescott's done in Dallas, and it's not what I want. And I don't believe it's the right thing, but I think he's done. Dallas is not going to resign him because it's going to be too expensive, and somehow, some way, Dallas is going to just let him walk, which I I'm going to be upset about. I would not be against seeing Dallas trade Dak Prescott during the draft and then also trading uh, Michael Parsons and just resetting and moving forward. I think Parsons is moving his way out of Dallas with his, his mouth and it's, it's awful. <laughs> I, so I, you, I wouldn't be you're, you're saying that there, there's like real, real drama there with Michael. I just, I think I just is. felt like, you know, it's just, he's, you know, I know, I know he, he talks a lot on his podcast, but I wasn't sure if it was way too much legit heat. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That's good. Yeah. I, I would not be in. Okay. He disappears in in December uh, in, the, in the playoffs. So yeah. I would not be against it. Let me just say, too, uh, uh, you brought him up earlier. Uh, Liatu Latu out of UCLA was another favorite amongst Dolphin fans. And there's a report on Walter Football that. Um, Miami <clears throat> really like Latou. Um, yeah. The one thing to watch for, though, with him is his medical concerns. Um, you know, obviously kind of similar to Jalen Phillips, uh, which might push him down <clears throat> to Miami's pick or possibly later. Uh, Scotty, he's uh, – okay. I'm going to pull that up in just a minute here. But <clears throat> let's move on to a quarterback that some consider – Possibly number one, we are in a definite argument for number two and three, Drake May. Mara Hodge, former ESPN analyst and NFL fullback, shocked a lot of people recently when he said on WCCO radio that Drake May is the kind of player that will get you fired, especially if you draft him in the top five or top three. He's going to get you fired. Some of you may, as I've said, it's the second possible best quarterback in this class. I don't think we don't. I have to look back at our thing. But Vogel, Hodge, what he says on May, fair or foul? Um, I mean, for him to see, I mean, he's doing the same thing that we're doing. He obviously sees stuff that he doesn't like. Um, you know, I think there's there's people that that see May and they had said for the longest time that he was a, him and uh, Williams were the top two quarterbacks in the draft. I mean, there, there are, you know, there are things that, you know, we had, we said behind the scenes that, um, you know, that there are some similar similarities to, um, I mean, the previous quarterback from North Carolina, I can't, his name just slipped my mind right there, uh, that went to Washington, you know, like they, there's some of that, you just, does he show up in the big games? He, you know, in 2023, he doesn't have, a signature victory over, you know, a powerhouse school or, you know, one of the, one of the bigger schools. So is that an issue? I do believe his 22 tape was better than his 23 tape. Uh, kind of like Williams, Williams 22 tape was much better than 23. Um, I didn't like his tape this year at all, <laughs> which kind of had me, that's the reason I had him at number two. Um, so I think, I mean, you know, I, 
it's the same thing. Is he going to go to a team that can, you know, if the Patriots draft him at three, do they have a good quarterback coach and offensive coordinator in play that can help develop him? I think a lot of this stuff just breaks down to who's drafting you and and do they have the people in place that can de- can develop talent. There's a lot of people coaching the NFL that maybe shouldn't be because a lot of these, you know, it's, it's just – to me it's about coaching and, and can you get the most out of the players that you draft. So – you know, if, if if he goes to a team that that has the people, then he'll be fine. You know, I think I think he's better than um, my names are just skipping me. Who was the quarterback for New England last year from Alabama? <laughs> it's oh, uh, holy crap! I um, see his face. Oh my goodness. Shoot, shoot, I can't believe it. I see it's uh, it just face too. Anyway, I think uh it just went Mac. Yeah. Mac Jones. Yeah, Mac I Mac. think he look I mean, I think I think he looks better on film than Mac Jones does. And I mean I don't know if that's Mac Jones. Not, I think there I mean, it is. All right. Mac Jones Mac Jones was, you know, in a difficult situation. I don't think he had good offensive he had what defensive coordinators and special teams coordinators calling the offense when he was the coordinator. I don't think he was. I love how we all couldn't come up with a name. We're all like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, froze. Yeah. Uh, we all just got the name. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my internet seems to be acting up on me today, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, all good. I, 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 it seems delayed. I thought it was the other one, but yeah, to back up Trevor Lawrence now, but, um, yeah. It's not a bad thing for Jacksonville. I mean, bad thing for Mac, though. But, uh, Wingate, your take on this. Yeah, I Merrill Hodge has been very good in his evaluations of these That's true. That's true. Um, and I'm not a big Drake May guy. I, I haven't watched too much of his 2022 film. But what I saw in 2023 is just I see someone that – his accuracy is just off consistently consistently. Um, and when you hear people talk about his 2022 film and his 2023 film, um, they're like, well, he's lost a lot of talent around him. And immediately when I heard that, I thought, okay, that's what I say about Caleb Williams. I need to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. But the difference is Caleb Williams. If he has time, if he is in the pocket, he makes the throw. Um, Drake May, with time, um, with an open receiver, he doesn't consistently make the throw, which makes me think he is not a top-tier quarterback. I think we're pushing him up. Um, I I can't remember what I have him graded at, um, but I want to say I probably have him as like a second-round pick. Um, I feel like we're we're pushing him up because quarterbacks, the value's there. Yeah, early second. We feel like Drake he's May. going to um, be – taken early in the draft so we have to be right so we have to move him up um i think that is what what is happening with drake may and um i know vogel said this before um that happened with Mitch trubisky um yeah so it's what are we like don't push a player up because he's a quarterback or this um i just I, i i don't see the value there with drake may in his film so, uh, again, watching him, it, it was kind of opposite, you know, that Chop Robinson. You know, you look at Chop Robinson's numbers and you you kind of go, uh, but then when you watch him on film, he jumps out at you. You know, I mean, it yeah. shows that, you know, this you could see that he could probably be a productive player in the NFL in the right team and the right system. Drake May, I mean, you read and you see all, all the numbers and you see what people are saying and you're like, Okay, I can't wait to watch this guy. For me, when I turned it on, I could see the 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 uh, talent, but again, there was just something missing there. I just, it, 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 as Josh was saying, there were some things that he took too long on plays. It got a little too excited. It was, it just was a little off compared to watching someone like a JJ McCarthy, who may end up being New England New England's pit, you know, yep. over Drake May. To me, J.J.'s a safer pick than a Drake May, um, who may end up being the Minnesota quarterback, depending on how uh, people value Michael Penix after his draft season so far. Um, I think it's fair. Hey, you know what? 
it's up to Drake May to prove Merrill Hodge wrong. But it is yeah. fair because based off the film, he's saying, hey, if you're going to trade up, let's say you're the Vikings and you trade up the top four or five, you give up a lot of draft capital for this guy who he believes is just not it. It's going to get you fired. It's, you know, and it is what it is. So <clears throat> let's get moving on here. Dolphins. Dolphins uh, made some news. They signed former Titans Texans nose tackle, Tier Tart, who had 79 total tackles, two and a half sacks, an interception, a fumble recovery, and 47 career games. Another move made by Miami that helps fill a need before the draft. But, Josh, does this stop them from taking a defensive lineman or nose tackle early in this month's draft? I don't think it stops them from taking a defense lineman in general. I think the line depth that you have is just that. I think it's depth. You're still looking for that top tier guy um, on that defense line. Other than I can't think of, we, we already know we're awful with names today. I can't think <laughs> of your um, sealer. Sealer, yeah. Zach Sealer, yeah. Yep. Other than Zach Sealer, I think Zach Sealer is a top tier starter uh, for your defense line, but you just have a bunch of guys everywhere else. So I think if you are able to get uh, a nose tackle, which I don't think there's a top tier nose tackle in this draft. Um, I'm, I'm down on sweat. Sweat is what a fourth or fifth round grade for me. Um, and especially with the, the arrest here recently, he's probably going to fall down. So you, you might be able to get him, but um, I think going and getting another defense at end to help your pass rushers is going to be valuable. And I, I think that's something you, you have to look at. And I, I would not rule out a defense alignment in this draft. Yeah, I'm with you. I got to say, uh, and I'm going to read Chris Kaufman's treat here for Scotty and those who are watching um, that Daniel mentioned. But uh, I, again, this move was a solid depth move. And it gives Miami some flex. Again, they fill a need. They were talking about nose tackle. A lot of fans were saying Miami needs a nose tackle. They go ahead and they sign Tart, uh, who's decent. I mean, it's a good, it's a solid signing. It's good for Miami, and it it gives again, it gives Miami extra flexibility to not have to go. Okay, we have to get a nose tackle with twenty one or fifty five or whatever pick they have in the top two. Now Miami could say, now does it stop them? Absolutely not. It, I don't believe it does one bit because if a Byron Murphy or, or a Braden Fisk, and I know people are talking about Johnny Newton. I'm going to get on that in just a second. But if, you know, if that Miami thinks they're that high on the board, then I think Miami still will take them. Um, but here's Chris Coffin's tweet. <clears throat> I'll read it out. <clears throat> Forgive me if I uh, break out here. But haven't really – this is him, quote, unquote. Haven't really commented on Tier Tart. He was on my short list of targets before free agency began, so obviously I like him. Um, I could be wrong, but I no longer think the Dolphins would be on to Byron Murphy or Johnny Newton at 21, maybe not even Darius Robinson either. Two things to weigh in on this, both I've described in other tweets. Again, this is C.K. Parrott. But Baltimore settled into a five-man defensive lineman rotation during Anthony Weaver's Dolphins D coordinator, his time there. Weaver's background in Baltimore and Houston – has not necessarily been to buy high on a defensive lineman, too. People forget, Miami already has Zach Sealer. He's their DL1, and he's a really, really good one. To help settle that five-player rotation, Miami has resigned Deshaun Hand, a former fourth-round pick, 1,200, 1200 career snap. Uh, played really well with Miami last year. Um, <clears throat> PFF has graded him the sixth best defensive lineman in football for those who followed it ahead of Jalen Carter, Christian Barmore, DeForest Buckner, etc. I don't think uh, any of us are buying what PFL is selling. PFF is selling when they grade him that high, but that they at least are actually valid and that hand played very well for Miami. Pro probably deserved more snaps than Vic Fangio turned into uh, Tom Thibodeau with his starting minutes. Um, so Miami also signed Benito Jones. Uh, they signed now now with Gallimore, um, who worked with Austin Clark, Jonathan Harris. So Miami has their five man rotation filled 
with guys with NFL experience, good grades, connections, and coaches and staff, the right position versatility. And then they signed Tier Tart. Um, let me go ahead and put this here. Uh, and that's even without mentioning guys like Brandon Peely, who made Miami's roster last year and played in some games. Isaiah Mack, who was with Balt and Waver in Baltimore, and Davion Nixon, a former fifth round pick. Dolphins, and that's without mentioning the team's interest. And obviously, this could be true too. Day three, uh, for possible free agents like Christian Boyd, Jack Daly, and FAU's Evan Anderson. Are they really going to draft the guy at 21 overall on top of all that? That's not in Anthony Weaver's history. His teams in Baltimore and Houston did not drive new cars off the lot with their DL2 rotations positions. Let's see. Bada, bada, bada. Um, they heavily invested in that defensive line over there. In they have. And, okay. So, okay. That's about it. Um, um, Brent Urban. Um, yeah. He's an old guy, um, but he was a fourth round pick. Um, Justin Matta BK. Uh, what was he? A what, what round did they get him in? Uh, second or third round, I believe. Um, and he's panned out for them. They have Travis Jones, who I believe they drafted in the third round. Um, and I believe they lost some pieces along the way. So that defensive line was heavily invested into. Um, in Baltimore, it took time to invest into that, but it was done. Um, so to say he doesn't need these top tier pieces, he probably doesn't, but it's not going to hurt him and it's going to show value, especially someone that is a defensive line coach. Um, they like to invest in the things that they know, um, or um, we could see it go the other way. Sometimes people are like, I can get the most out of these guys because this is my specialty. So let's invest in something else. Um, it's going to be fun to see where it is, but if they do get this defensive line and they want to see someone opposite of Sealer, I'm not going to complain about that. But the I feel like the one, one or two spots that I feel like the Ravens are missing um, to be able to truly go BPA in this draft is the offensive line. Um, they need interior help. Um, I don't think you could walk in day one and go um, Isaiah Wynn and Robert Jones as your two guards. Um, you have to figure something out there. And then as well, I feel I, – and I could be wrong on this, but um, because there is a guy on your, your roster that I'm very high on from the draft process a few years ago, um, but I feel like you still need to look for that wide receiver three. I don't think Barrios is the guy to be your wide receiver three. I think he's a really good depth piece. Um, but there is a guy that I'm big on, Braylon Sanders. I would love to see what he does. I believe he's about to go year two or three into his his uh, seasons in the NFL. I'd love to see what you can get out of him because I was really high on him coming out of Mississippi. <laughs> I think that's all fair, and I will say too. Again, as I was saying earlier, do you know? I understand what Chris is talking about. Uh, I think it's fair, um, and I, I appreciate the history that he brought up there. You know, the notes uh, in regards of what Weaver did or what Weaver's yeah. defense did in Baltimore. However, again, um, I think this tells about this gets Vibe's hardcore need of nose tackle or D tackle gets them to kind of say, okay, let's go ahead and focus on positions like edge rusher yeah. receiver. Cause again, Barrios is, you know, that can't be your wide receiver three. Yeah. And now if they go OBJ, they get bring OBJ in that gives them that, that flexibility extra now to go ahead and look at interior offensive line. Again, if I had to say the three positions with D tackle again, being the wild card, cause I'm braided fix all day. It would be edge rusher, interior offensive line, and uh, wide receiver at 21 for Miami. Currently, the way free agency has played out. And, and I think we identified that uh, edge rusher isn't in uh, Jalen Phillips is, is coming off injury. I think Bradley Chubb is injured as well. Yeah. Um, but that's where the, the value of we need an edge rusher comes from. But also, let's look into future seasons. Um we, we identified this early in, in our process of Bradley Chubb can be cut 
um, pretty, I think, next next season, and you get money back. I don't think Bradley Chubb is doing what you want him to do because of the injury, uh, injuries that he's had while in Miami. Um, Jalen Phillips is coming up on a big contract. Um, do you re-sign him or do you let him go? Um, what is going to happen in that process? So having it to where, hey, let's look at a edge rusher this season. So when we get into next season, we're, our hands aren't tied and we're like, well, we need to keep Bradley Chubb. We need to keep Jalen Phillips because you could say, well, we drafted a guy before that, that can replace Bradley Chubb. Um, Jalen Phillips, uh, we can't afford your contract. We'd love to keep you. You're a great guy off the field. You're a great guy on the field, uh, but we can't afford your contract. Let's take it in the next season and get our other edge rusher and have these two guys compete together. Um, it puts you in a better situation going forward. And I feel like if um, Chris Greer is to turn his, because he had, I, I think he's had a great off season so far. Um, if yeah. he's to turn around his stint in Miami, getting ahead of himself and starting to get rid of these big contracts that he hurt himself with early um, is going to be valuable. So an edge rusher early on is going to, um, I think it's a very, very high like likely possibility um, in Miami. So, uh, <laughs> Polar Knights, thank you for watching on Twitch. As a barber, I love this. It is like the perfect evolution of beard growth. And I just trimmed it. I just cleaned it yeah. up a little bit. But yes, yeah. you know, you got the uh, the fi you got the Fitz. Wait over here, you got the Fitzpatrick. Yeah, you got here is just, you know I don't know what you call this, but then over here you got the Amish. You know, it's a whole uh, yeah. right there. <laughs> No, all good. Hey, Paul and I, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, Scotty says, do you guys option the fifth on Phillips and Waddle by May? Um, Phillips, yes. Waddle, yes. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I guess I would say both. I guess you have to. Uh, it's depending who you want to, who you're comfortable tagging when the contract comes up. We got a guest star on the draft on the draft show tonight. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Coach Vogel, would you option the fifth on Phillips and Waddle? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't think that, like, that's just a forward scene thing going to happen. I don't think you're – there's even a conversation. It's just like, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. Jalen Phillips, Jalen Waddle need to be obviously optioned and worked out to extend. That's what Miami needs to do. They need to focus on that. Yeah. And that's going to cost you. That's what people don't realize. Okay, again, they say, oh, we don't need a wide receiver three because everybody's looking at Tyreek and, and Jalen. They're not thinking about the guy. But, every, you know, everybody's hoping that easy is going to be something. His, his offseason videos are coming out. Very nice. Okay. Again, hasn't seen the field. Barks and Barrios, very talented. Good fourth, fifth receiver. I'm not comfortable as a third. Uh, River Craycraft, good third, fourth, fifth receiver. Not comfortable with him as a third. My and again, it's not just about being a third receiver and go getting that third receiver. It's also about next season and the season after Tyreek Hill's contract is going to come up. You got to either, you know, he says he's going to retire after his contract's up, or you got to move him. If the, you know, especially if you don't do anything, and then also Bradley Chubb as as Josh has brought up. So you lose those guys, and you don't have a Chop Robinson possibly or Darius Robinson. Uh, as, as an edge rusher to come up and replace Bradley Chubb right away, and then you maybe got to spend a draft pick or money on another guy, or Tyreek goes away. What if you have a Brian Thomas or a uh, or a, 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 any other of those guys that we talked, Javon Baker out of UCF? Now you're kind of you're you're prepping yourself for the future while also taking care care of the current. Um, option them and work on Hollis' extension first. Who said? something on Javon Holland. I'm glad I'm with Coach. I think it was I saw something somebody, I think Omar Kelly had said so. I don't know what he said exactly. But somebody went off uh, about what he said. I don't think he meant it a bad way but I don't know. So I'm perfect. But basically he's saying that Javon Holland had one good year basically. I saw somebody going off saying that. Yeah. I, I do. I do remember seeing that basically that he he hasn't lived up to his contract. Yeah, I, 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 I've been looking forward to talking to you about Brent? that. And obviously, Wingate's no, it wasn't Brent. <laughs> it was Omar <laughs> Kelly, and then uh, I forgot the 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 young lady's name, Dolphin fan. She just went to town on Omar. But I wanted. I was like, man, I can't wait to sit down and talk to these guys 
because I would love to hear from Coach Vogel on Javon Holland because Scotty's saying you got to work on his extension. Should Miami work on his extension? It, has he lived up to a contract extension? I mean, I I think he's been been great. I know that there was some some injuries and he was out a little bit this year, but I mean, with the 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 hundred yard pick six against the Jets, like uh, you don't you don't. <laughs> You don't see guys doing that very often. I think he, I think he's worth an extension, in my opinion. Now, unbiased opinion from Josh, your thoughts on Javon Holland as a the safety for Miami? I I like Javon Holland. I think, um, I mean, he's a good tackler. He he can play in the box. He can play um, deep safety. I think he's valued. I, I'm very interested in to see what they do with him um, in this new scheme. Um, because I think him being that chess piece that can move around and do a lot of things um, is going to be valuable to him. Um, pretty similar, and I'm trying to um, think about who is the guy that was drafted out of Notre Dame. Vogel might know this, the safety. Kyle uh, Hamilton. Uh, Kyle Hamilton. Um, he could be that Kyle Hamilton in this defense, uh, that chess piece that just moves around, plays um, in the box, plays deep, just moves around. Um, I, I, I think – People expect you draft this this guy and he just needs to be on fire every single game. People have off days. Um, I think Javon Holland is a really, really good safety in this league. And if you can get him at a safety price tag, which is very cheap in the NFL nowadays, um, you have to re-sign this guy. He, he's a starting quality <laughs> safety that is on the upper echelon of the safety class. So um, I like what Coach just wrote in the in the chat there. Holland is Omar's new two. I always need someone to thank. Um, look, uh, I you know I, I think you, you're absolutely right in the way you said it. You know, there's a lot of people, and maybe Omar's one of those who who fascinated on Holland's first second year, where it showed like, oh man, this dude's going to be an elite defender every year, every game, and I mean. He's one of the be better safeties in the NFL, probably one of the top five, top ten safeties. To me, you don't fix what's not broken. Don't even entertain that. You know, what do you want from him? You know, he's not <clears throat> he's not Ed Reed. Okay. You know what? He's probably one of the better safeties we've had in a long time. I don't know where that idea is coming from. Uh, CR, CCRR says trade Holland, There's no depending trade on the contract. A safety in the NFL. You're not no. going to get the value of what he's going to give you on the field um, in the in the NFL today. They just don't value safeties, so you're, you're not going to see it. All right, let's um, move on. I, I, uh, elaborate, CCRR, and we appreciate you watching. But please elaborate what the heck you're talking about. Um, all right, so. My son's in trouble. My wife just messaged me. We need to talk about Tristan. Like, okay. Uh-oh, oh. Tristan, Tristan. Damn, what a Tristan I don't know what he did, but all right. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about a recent uh, top uh, 30 draft visit um, that Miami has scheduled. Uh, Dolphins, according to Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald, the Dolphins will, get, will have Marshall running back Rasheen Ali in for a 30 visit in the coming weeks. Uh before I go into his numbers and all that, have you guys had a chance to look into him at all, Rasheen Ali? I did watch a little bit of. Uh, he, he only had one game on there against NC State. Yeah. Um, he flashed a little bit, but I didn't. I didn't think he was super special. I mean, when you yeah. watch Chan and then you watch him, you're just like, there's no comparison. Um, he's not explosive in the hole. Um, yeah. He could struggle um, to find the, the hole. He he kind of. Um, he gets impatient a little bit uh, and wants to cut it up right away rather than finding um, the hole and, and prolonging how long he is behind the, the offensive line. Um, I don't, he's a, a very, he's a willing blocker, but he's just, he's not a blocker overall. Um, I will say, I don't know if his quarterback was just super small, but my first initial sight of that was. Man, this guy looks like Derek Thomas or Derek Henry right next to his quarterback. And I find out he's like 5'11", um, 206 pounds. So he, he's pretty thick, though, for his his body type is, is solid. So I do like that. But I think 
ultimately he's going to be a special teams guy, maybe a third running back um, who could potentially jump up into a, a running back too. But I don't see like a starter quality out of him at all. That's, that's yeah. So, so uh, again, I have to actually sit down and watch. I watched a little bit. I I saw that there was only one game on our uh, on our. Uh, excuse me if you hear my daughter screaming out there. Um, but I saw some stuff. Uh, YouTube pulled it up. Saw a couple some of the games on there. Um, was reading up on him. First off, what stood out to me. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a five eleven, six foot two oh nine. Was what I saw. Um, so good, good girth for his size. Uh, good production. Uh, last year he had 11, 1,135 yards, 15 touchdowns, about five and a half yards per carry. And then as a receiver, 46 receptions, 213, one touchdown. Um, and again, uh, Scotty said it here. We brought in some late round guys, uh, which is to. true. You know, and th- again, we, we talked about this when we talked about Miami meeting up with Bo Nix. Just because you meet with a prospect does not mean, oh, they're going to draft them. No, it's called uh, being detailed, you know, doing your due diligence. And a lot of the guys Miami has not met with, or history has shown, even when you don't meet with a prospect, listen, you've been scouting these guys for years. You know what you want. You know what your board looks like. There's guys that won't be reported. You're going to go, wait, I, Miami never met with that guy. They're going to take him. So yeah. it's just what happens. Now, uh, Miami's just doing their due diligence here. Uh, I'm going to go on the opposite end of that. Obviously, yes. S- saw a lot of what you guys saw. Um, willing receiver. Uh, he played a little bit of wildcat. Um, I think he's patient. I saw some patient, you know, when he was running the hole, trying to find the hole. Um, I did see some excitement where he made a little, you know, ran into a crowd here and there. Um, not the fastest, not the fastest, but, um, and it's, this is what I read. I didn't see because I hadn't had much time, but was reading up on him and they actually brought up Shanahan system saying he would be a perfect back for a Shanahan system type of back. And this wasn't a dolphin blog or nothing like this. This was yeah. on a scouting thing. Uh, which actually stood out to me. Uh, playing at running back, receiver, a little bit of wildcat. I saw some of that. That screams Mike McDaniel. So does that mean my, the Dolphins are going to draft him? No. But does that mean Miami is looking for guys that are going to fit their system that may they may experiment with like they did with Easy e and what Easy e could offer this offense if he actually plays? I think that's the benefit you get out of someone like a Rasheen Ali. But no. He's not a first, second, third, fourth, fifth. He's a six, seven, undrafted. Homework by Miami, smart homework. You can't bring in a bunch of um, first, second, third round guys, fourth round guys, because you don't have a third and fourth round pick. Uh, so you have to bring in these later round guys to um, bring in and evaluate them because you need to find value in these that fifth, sixth, um, seventh round pick because yeah. – if you don't hit on them, or if you do hit on them, um, you're not going to care about that third, fourth round pick that you're not, you, you don't have. You, um, and I'm like Bobby's looking like he's, like, um, what's his name from from Marvel, um, with the with the third eye with yeah. his camera right there. Um, but if you do hit on a fifth and maybe a sixth round pick, yeah, um, it's just. You're not going to care about not having that third or fourth round pick, and and it's just going to be better for you. So, bringing in these later round guys, evaluating them, getting to know them a little more in your in your uh, building, spending that five hours when you're used to spending thirty minutes with them, um, it's really going to give you that upper hand when it comes to um, the later round picks. Yeah, I well, and also for um, undrafted free agents, you know. You got to yeah. you're gonna bring in a bunch of those too, so you might as well do your do your homework now if you've got a, a good idea of who, um, you know, of who who you're gonna draft and, and some of these later round guys that you want to bring in after after the draft commences. Are we gonna let Bobby join us? I'm later? coming, stupid damn thing! I told you it's all acting up. It is what it is. That's what happens when we take that much time off. Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep this ball rolling here because I want to try to get. Get here out at 9.30. Keep it rolling. And something we haven't done in a while, but now we're going to get a clearer picture, is the mock draft simulator, the war room. So sure. we'll try to keep it. We'll keep it fast.
All right. Add this. If we could survive it. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and we'll make it short, sweet. We know uh, we'll say trades are on the table, but we'll limit it to two trades, guys. Uh, that way we don't keep we don't go crazy, okay? Uh, but we will use what we currently have. Now, my only question would be here, Coach and Wingate, in this scenario, do the Dolphins sign OBJ? I'm going to say um, no. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to say they sign him after the draft. Um, so I agree. He won't be okay. signed. Yeah, he won't be signed as of, as of this. All right. All right, so let me go ahead and go ahead and let this run here. Bam. Let me go ahead and back out. All right. So there's your board. I, can you guys see that okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, gotcha. what, what do you feel about this uh, Jackson Powers Johnson falling to like the second round conversation? I We touched on that. Um, I think it's the injury talk, right? Uh, my Ray look, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would not. I look when there's smoke. You know, again, these could be teams, agents, general managers throwing that stuff out there to try to push down a guy or to get their guy up. Happens all the time. Teams are trying to hope for guys to fall to them. Um, I won't say it's a possibility because we know how it is. You know, we know how, you know, people say, oh, there's no way. There's always a way. There's always a yeah. way. Um, but I would feel more comfortable trading down if that were the case because then we could hope that either Graham Barton or Jackson Powers are still on the board. Yeah. In this mock, though, Jared Verse is still on the board, edge rusher. Yeah. Um, Chop Robinson went 19 to the Rams. Brian Thomas to the Jaguars. Um, there are three trades. Byron Murphy's still on the board. Let's go ahead and look at the trades. You got Detroit uh, uh, wanted to trade up. They offered 29 and a second round pick next year. Jesus. Cincinnati, 49, 80, 97, 115 in a second. No, thank you. And Houston, 42, 59, 123. So that's what a two seconds and a mid round pick. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be. So your first pick is 40, not 42 instead of. Yeah. In the first round. I might be willing to do that one. Uh, that's get an extra pick. pick. That's the 10th pick in the second round. And then. You get pretty close to the end of the second round as well, so you're gonna have. To so we would have and... the forty second, the fifty fifth, and the fifty ninth. Yep. And then one twenty three. Pull the trigger, Bobby. Pull the trigger. Yeah, I think I. So, that. all right, fair game. I'm I'm okay taking the move. All I'm saying is I have this one question to ask you both. Verse. We have them rated high, on our board. We do. We would we would it really be worth passing up on him here? Taking this trade. Now we do get a few extra picks, so I'm cool with that. But again, are we that are we comfortable doing it? I like the value of the players in the second round and okay. having three picks to do something with in that second round. I I, I think I okay. can do some I think I can do some damage in the second round with three picks. All right. Let's roll it. Scotty's not gonna like it. It's just so Scotty's time to do. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. All right. Ooh. Johnny Newton's still on the board. Tyler Newton. Newton's still on the board. Brad McConkey. I love that Zach guy. Zach Frazier, who I love. Uh, that might be my pick there. All right, Vogel, we'll start with you first. Your thoughts. Who who you who would you take with this pick? Frazier. I think for, uh, I think it, me personally, I think Frazier's going to have a long career. I I feel, I feel he's similar to to Kelsey. <laughs> I love. Uh, I mean, I love the wrestling background. I think yeah, does a lot for you. Tough uh, guy, absolutely. You need somebody like that on your offensive line. Yeah. I don't think there's. I I, I love Jackson Powers, and I don't want this to come up the wrong way. 
I don't think there's much of a drop off. I think this guy's a very solid center yeah. for years yeah. to come. Josh, your thoughts? Um, Zach Frazier call catches my eye right away. If you scroll down for me real quick, just to see who else is there, um, I do think what your boy is going to be there too. Oh yeah, I know he's here. Um, which is crazy in my in my opinion. Oh, Scotty is going to love this guy. Cameron Kitchens is still there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we picking what? There's Braden. We got we got fifty five still. We have fifty five. Yeah. So I think I think I like the move. We address our offensive line. You get Zach Frazier again. You could you could plug in Frazier at center at the start. You put Weaver at guard. Um, so that solves two spots for you. Yeah. All right, let's go Frazier. I just taking a look at this. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'm, uh, yeah, and I'm not cool with that. I'm not giving up a pick. All right. So, I don't think Penix lasts that long. There's no way. Uh, at least I don't. I don't like to say there's no way, but I doubt it. Um. All right. Jump over to defense. Jump over to defense. Jump over to defense. Yeah. I already. I know who I want. I know who I want. He's right there. But that's just me. Well. There's a no, lot I think, of defensive tackle right now on this board. Yeah. Chris Jenkins, I think, could very easily go in the first round. I would not be against that. Yeah. Um, he's just a hair on fire kind of guy, but Braden Fisk gives as well. Yeah. Um, if you scroll up for me real quick, I know this is difficult um, on this thing for you to scroll up. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. Um, I don't know yeah, why it's like that, bro. Uh, we're all These are D tackles. tackles. Yeah, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? Just all. the all. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Patrick Paul. I mean, I know we went um, center, but Patrick Get Paul there is, is valuable. Um, but I mean, I'm a I'm right there with you on Fisk. I feel like if we're not going Fisk, we're doing something wrong um, because I think he is going to be a star in this league. I do too. Coach, your thoughts? Yeah, go for it. You know, I'm a fan. I truly all right. we're probably he's probably gonna go fifteenth overall. And we're gonna be like, okay. <laughs> we you know up. that's gonna you know that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Right. So we're at fifty nine after the trade, which you know, ain't that beautiful. Uh we'll check out that. wide receivers. Okay, fair game. Let's go wide receiver. Love that. So we got Corley. Look at that, Malachi Corley. Yeah. 215. He is Roman. Like, Corley is like, he's a dude. Yeah, um, I like him. I think uh, Baker's a little too low on this board. Boy. I do too, because he's he he checks all the boxes for Jermaine me. Burton is way too high with his off the field issue. Um, Mahogany. Patrick Paul still there. Or tight end. What do you got a tight end? Um, tight end is a good point. Jatavion Sanders. Ben Sinat. Ben Sinat. Yeah. We love him. So yeah. Sanders, you know, Miami is – they like him a lot. They're interested. And if you get him, I mean – I heard someone say that the tight end class is weak. I disagree. I completely oh, no, agree. There's no way. You think it's weak? No, I completely agree with you. I think, uh, I think it's stacked Sinat. this year. I'm not big on Sanders, but yeah, no, not, the tight end. I think I I need to go back and watch Theo Johnson because after his combine, I think there's something more to than what they used him for. Um, another thing there is Trey Benson is still on the board. Um, yep, he would be on fire behind in this offense. He's just an overall like. I mean, that's a, that is a very good point. Like he how many be, how many running backs are gonna? Catch up. Marshawn Nealon still in there. Brandon Dorless, Brandon Trice, Chris Broswell, um, uh, Edge Rusher. You guys would have to talk about the Edge guys. Um, because I'm so not... let me pull this up here. I'm pretty sure one of you are pretty big on Braswell, right? Uh, where's he from? Alabama. No, ooh, yeah. We both. I, we. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're good, Bobby. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what we have on him, we have uh, a third-round grade on him. 
on Broswell, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Broswell, we have uh, Vogel has a second round grade on him. He's pretty high. Um, Dar Darius is the third round grade. But we still have a third round pick. Let's not forget yeah. about that. Yeah. That's. Um, we don't have to force the pick. Um, we, we don't have, have to. No. Go to have, all. You're yeah. all. We have an offensive center, and that's pushing a guard. So we're looking pretty good on the offensive line right now. Yep. We have on the defensive side, we got who we think is going to be a star in the league. Yep. Um, so what's up, Chef? Uh, good to see you, brother. Thank you for tuning in, my man. I would ask Bobby. Fins up, brother. Um, who is the best player on the board right now, in your opinion? Mm. It's a great question. Backup quarterback. So, yeah, <laughs> starting quarterback. You mean? <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to look over that. Uh, I know. I just, yeah, yeah you're, you're just starting trouble. Uh, but I really you know, think um, Benson is the best. Oh, there's the kid Kinchins too. I didn't like Kinchins when I watched him. I wasn't a huge well. Let's fan. see. Bo Braid still on the board. Um, look, obviously Michael Penix is the best player on the board, but um, Miami, you know, they, they, they're showing interest in running backs. We've heard that they, you know, we all think they need that ground and pound back to fit with the speed of Mozart and uh, Achen. I'm not against Troy Benson. You I, know, this is I mean, if we're, down, this is kind of pick. a – I don't want to call this like a throwaway pick, but it's an added bonus. So, I mean, yeah. with your added bonus, you might as well take him, right? I, I think Trey Benson is – if you're going to ask me to pick one running back in this draft who could be a star, I think it's Trey Benson. It's him. All right, go for it. Let's go. This is why we do this. This is what this That's is. Right. This is the war room. You know what I mean? Oh, you you know, know, chart, three picks back to back to back. That was crazy. Did they really? Yeah. <laughs> Do we not have a third round pick? We had a fourth round pick. Uh, one twenty two. Okay. All right. Ooh, there's Audrey. Kate Stover. I love Audrey. Kate Stover still on the board. Um, let me go ahead here for a second. Jalen Ford, linebacker. I see safety. Oh, Cam Hart. Oh, Let's see. The UTEP edge. I, I, I watched him. I, I do like him. Jalen Ford. Jalen Ford out of Texas? Oh, no. Who you talking about? What's his name? Um, the edge. Um, where's, his name? where's the UTEP guy at? Did I miss something? Uh, could it be a defensive tackle? I just saw the, a UTEP guy. Oh, Tyrus Stanny, a, a linebacker. Yeah. Linebacker, yeah. I don't think you guys need the interior. I think you're pretty solid in on the interior. I, we linebacker. do need linebacker. I'd be interested in a linebacker here. You think you guys need a linebacker? Oh shoot! I forgot we no. Maybe we don't. Now that we, I forgot we did sign a couple guys. So. Yeah, you, you signed. Hey, Baker. Baker's still on the board here. Javon Baker, wide receiver. You see? Oh yeah, that's what I want. I'm gonna. I'm I gonna I, I love what I saw from him. I see Brandon Rice, and I you know obviously Jerry Rice's son. You can't go you know, but yeah, that's right. name. Um, but Jacob Cowling, Luca McCaffrey too. is there too. I think a receiver at this pick. Junk. Yeah, I think there's so much value at receiver right here. Um, Jalen Coker is good. Um, but who do yep. you guys think go with? If it's Javon Coach. I, I want, I'm want. i screaming all day for Baker. How big is Baker? Oh, he's, he's uh, well, say 6'1 here, but he's 6'2. Um, so Ed. let me ask you this. Um, is Baker going to be an outside guy and you're going to move someone inside or you're just going to be moving everyone all around? I say all around. Uh, no, we Isn't haven't drafted a safety. Isn't that kind of uh, I will role? say. Do you think Baker? I will play? say though. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. Do you think Baker could play the slot, Coach? 
I, I mean, I think he could. Yeah. And the and the film I saw, he kind of played a little bit of everything. So perfect. I haven't watched him yet. So my, I would say this. Again, Miami has met with him. He's talked about this. Um, obviously, his brother is an offensive assistant here. Luke McCaffrey is not someone to overlook for Miami. That's true. Uh, That's true. You know, uh, again, I think I don't know if it was. I think maybe it was Josh. And forgive me, Josh, if I. But you know, you brought up the multiple roles he played and yeah. what he could play. Cool. Again, that, we just we just talked about Rashid Rashid Ali. So again, I mean Baker, I I like what I. See saw out of him. I think he's rated way too low here. Um, but Luke McCaffrey fits Miami. Um, let me go ahead and look at safeties very quick because even though Miami might need a safety, Scotty, at this spot, right, if Jaden Hicks was still available, I'd say Jaden Hicks right now. Um, but he got drafted at 119. But even though Miami needs a safety, I'm not comfortable just taking a safety because we need him. Um, yeah. I like Kate Stover. But I'm between Javon, Javon Baker and Luke McCaffrey right here. Yeah. What type of safety would you guys need? Well, Miami, again, people think, you know, people, I know CCRR saying we aren't drafted a safety this year. Uh, some people don't believe we need a safety because Bobby's obviously got, um, I forget his name right now, obviously got Holland and we Miami signed. Um, Jordan Poyer. Yes, Jordan Poyer. But Miami still wanted to bring back the safety we had last year to be a three, you know, back there, like they did with Brandon Jones, who also left. Yeah. So do not sleep on a safety. Um, but and that's, uh, you know, again, depends on who's available and at what spot. Bobby, I'm, I, bet I, I'm between, I'm at wide receiver. I, uh, I changed my mind. McCaffrey. Say what? McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, down with McCaffrey. Know. Wingate. I think McCaffrey in this offense could open it up even more yeah. um, because he could kind of be, and I'm trying to think of the guy that was at Pittsburgh um, that was a receiver, um, played quarterback in college. Slash uh, Stewart? No, no. Cordell no. Stewart? No, not Cordell. Um, I can't think of the guy's name. Um, but he was their, like, gadget receiver. I think he could be that for, for Miami. Uh, go tight end. See who's available tight end. See if my, my buddy's there. Okay. Dalen Hulker's right there. Yeah, Hulker, Hulker's my my sleeper. I like him a lot. Eric All did visit Miami. He did meet with Miami. But Dalen Hulker, I, I like him. Yeah. Um, you could probably wait. I mean, but of course we're going on our board, not theirs. So one uh, we got one. We could we could wait a little bit if there's an a, what do you have for all? So looking at all. Aaron Casey, linebacker at Indiana. Ray Davis, running back, but we did get a running back. Isaiah Adams, offensive guard, is there. Illinois. Look at this big guy. The, the guys in the chat talking about a safety. Got a safety out of Oregon State. Kalen Aladapo, 6'2", 216. Did yeah. we look at him? I don't think we did. Um, Let me see. I, I don't Let me go down this. Like I don't think you guys need him, but Justin Ibogby, I, I don't mind him at this pick. Um, don't sleep on him, yeah. If, I'm trying to see. I want to force you to scroll down because let's let's get a punter. Oh, sorry. Uh, you want to look at a punter? No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't draft. Oh, you're messing with oh, I, I, don't, mess with I don't draft kickers or punters. I like Evan Williams. Days. Evan Williams. We did watch him. Are you talking about safeties? So, is Wingate Bo had Brady or Vaki there? We'll take a look at Vaki in just a second. Uh, I did see Evan Williams. Who we have a third rate, a third round grade on. Um, what did I do to Evan Vaki? Williams? Is there out of Utah? I like, I like Vaki. Oh, I had Evan Williams graded pretty high. Yeah, you did. Let's see. Do you have notes on him? I'm, I'm popping that up right now. Gotcha. MDC, man, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you hitting that like button. Guys, everyone who's tuning in right now, thank you so much and participating in the chat. We appreciate you guys. Um, whether you're watching on Twitch, X, Facebook, YouTube, thank you so much. 
if you're in anything other than YouTube, do me a favor, hop on over here, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and please feel free to tell us what you did, like, dislike, and who you would like Miami to possibly take at any of these picks. Um, um, I have Evan Williams as a box safety with great closing speed. I have his closing speed as a seven. Um, Ooh, okay. He is a very sure tackler. All right. Uh, so we need those. I have him as a strong safety. Um, again, box safety. Who? I mean, he can play um, zone, so he can he can go back there. Have him as average. I mean, he's not going to hurt you. Uh, the tackling. What do you have him as at tackling, Josh? I he's very. I have him as a very sure tackler. Seven point five is my grade. Yeah, his yeah. Player. That's. I would go with him. I like sure. Evan tackling. Williams. Yeah. Is that is that what you're We're saying? talking? Evan Williams, right? Yeah, Evan yeah. Williams. What what do they have on him? Um, do they have hey, any information? Uh, let's see. No, no, come not on him. Um, uh, but I, I I trust you. I trust your 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 your. Oh, yeah, I trust Josh's. You know your eyes. What you yeah. So I'm down. I'm, I'm, we need a safety guys. You talk about a safety. Let's roll with safety here. Evan Williams. Here's your safety. All right. I'll keep rolling. Forgive me, coach. We're getting there, brother. No, we're good. All right. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I'll take out tight end. All right. Yeah. Christian Boyd on the board. We know Miami's looking at him. Dalen Hulker's still there. Either, I'm down with that. One of those tight ends, either either him or all. Yeah. All is is I, I personally prefer Hulker. Let's see what we got. Uh, so Oh, we didn't even watch Hulker. Do I not have anything on him? I thought I did. Uh, you, oh, we I didn't. You watched him. Um, we don't have him on our list. I don't. I don't think we do. Um, what do we have on? I don't even think we watched all. Um, so we'll have to go back and watch these these guys. Um, but you did watch him. I think Hulker was your. Um, yeah, the guy that he, you he was one of my top fives. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. I saw him in Colorado State. I think we'll trust coach here. I'll go with Dylan Hoker. All right. I think at this point you just start going best <laughs> best player available. Well, do we, well so we all the... so here. So let's look at who we have so far. Okay. Zach Frazier, offensive. We got the center. Again, you plug him at center, put uh, uh um Brewer at guard, <laughs> Braden Fisk, Trey Benson, Luke McCaffrey, Evan Williams, Dalen Hulker. Uh, we got Braden Fisk. I think Christian Boyd, um, even though Miami is so an interest, I think, you know, we just talked about how deep our depth is at the tackle. I think we're set. I think we're okay with that. Um, I think here I'm looking at the edge rusher. Uh, let me take a look here, pull this up. Christian Boyd out of Iowa. Northern. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did like him. I did like him. What did I Which one? That? Christian Boyd out of Northern Iowa. Well, look at this. Um guys, help fix this up for me. Uh Gabriel Murphy. Is there two Gabriel Murphys on UCLA that I that because yeah. I saw a solid prospect. Why is he ranked so low on this thing? We have him as a fourth round pick. You guys were. And he, are they brothers? Is there is two Gabriel there? Murphys? And... No, I don't think so. I thought there were two brothers that have very similar. First this names. is crazy. I don't. What position? Ed, edge. Edge rusher Gabriel Murphy, UCLA. Unless I um, because I thought I liked what I saw to him. I don't. I don't think yeah, he's there's, that low. There's, are they saying he's that low on Gabriel, their on their board? There's Gabriel Murphy and there's Grayson Murphy. Both are D linemen at yeah, you, UCLA. Uh, what did you grade him out as? Uh, Graylin, I had five. Hey, Gabriel five. Murphy. You had him at five nine Do seven. We, I know we watched him. You yeah, had third round pick. You had yeah. You had for Gabriel. You had him as a. Uh, uh, him as a, a set, you, I have a. I have a. Yeah. Fourth round. I think that's the guy you take. Dude, I'm take I am yeah. down to take Gabriel here. I want to take Gabriel. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got Roll. to, dude. It, oh my gosh. Hell yeah. 
Hell yeah. All right, one more. We're going to take about 10 minutes just for coach. I'm just playing. Mm. <laughs> Oh, Cowboys got that Brevin span for it. All right. This is a okay. gimme pick. So I let's can we please look at quarterback? Is Ford on there? No, just quarterback. Let's see. Sam Hartman is there. Who else is available at quarterback? Nathan Thomas. Oh, my guy is there. Oh, at quarterback. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Which one is that? Yeah, at the bottom. Talia. <laughs> Talia. Yeah, I see it. No, do it. Do it, Bobby. Do it, Bobby. Uh, do I would it. say, in my opinion, I think Sam Hartman um, could be a pick, an option here. Um, I also think the running back out of Georgia, um, can't think of his name right now, Edwards. Yeah. De- Dejan Edwards. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's John Edwards. I think he's uh-huh. going to be. He has great vision. He's always moving forward. Um, he's just like a. We already took a running back, but hey, we need a, a third string guy that could eventually. I think he could be a change of pace guy, and um, he could be a, a not a starter, but he could be a guy in in a combination of running back. All right, <laughs> Carlton Johnson corner. Uh, I, I'm okay to take Hartman here. Practice quarterback, I, but I don't possibly like, could beat. I don't. I don't like White, so hopefully Hartman can beat him out. And there you go. All right, let's do that. You guys messed up with White. I, I, I did I didn't do that when we signed him. Rasheen Ali just went to the White Ravens, and there you go. So uh, Zach Frazier, Braden Fisk, Troy Benson, Luke McCaffrey, Evan Williams, Dalen Halker. Gabriel Murphy and finish it off, Sam Hartman. I think that's I like a solid, it. solid. I draft. like it. I think that's a, I would be extremely happy if we had that kind of a draft. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Love it. I love that we were able to use our uh our board I there. With, sure. uh, CC. Ooh, um, I definitely disagree with CCRR. Uh on, on I've Hulker. watched the f- I've watched I've watched I lot agree with his Dwayne uh Carter assessment. I think he is a, a dude. Um I think he he's being undervalued. Dwayne Carter is. Yeah. All right. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong, but I'll go back. We're the highest on him. Yeah, I I, I liked <laughs> what I saw, but I'll go back and want, rewatch it. I don't mind. You had him oh. as a third round pick. Border there you go. Second. There you go. All right, hey guys, look, uh, man, we, we we did we didn't do too bad. I think the time was pretty good. Um, appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, appreciate Coach and Josh to to That's bear cool. with me and do the show tonight. Uh, don't forget, hey guys, put in, in the comments below. Even after the video, we see them. Uh, comment on the YouTube video. Tell us who you think you would like Miami to take at twenty one. Should Miami trade down? Were there guys that you think that we should have took that we skipped on? Um, we appreciate you all tuning in. On behalf of Coach and Josh Wingate, like, subscribe, and most importantly, as always, ends up. (laughs) It's the Fins Talk Sports Network, FTSN, talking major sports and even wrestling. Bobby Fins Talk and his FTSN crew. Take a deep dive just to entertain you. Talking dolphins, heat, and hurricanes, mullets, and panthers, and into my